Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. If you're turning your Bibles, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. My subject this morning, the unseen spiritual battle. There is a battle raging. It's the battle of all ages. There have been many battles fought for the freedom of this great nation and for other nations. These wars that have been fought, they were costly on both sides. But the battle that we're fighting as a Christian, it is the battle of ages. It is the battle of all battles. Your victory in this war it will be determined by what you do in this life and what you do with the Word of God in the life to come. You will either live in victory in this life or you will live in defeat. And if you live in defeat, you might not make it the way you want to go to heaven in eternity. Now, there's a battle going on, the battle of the ages. Look at 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. But though we walk in the flesh, Apostle Paul is opening up our understanding. We do not war after or according to the flesh. The Bible says there is a battle to be fought, but we don't fight it according to the flesh. We don't use natural weapons. We use spiritual weapons. Look at verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're not natural, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Here it comes. Some of these strongholds, casting down imaginations as arguments, thought activity, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought into captivity, into the obedience of the Word of God. So many Christians want what God has, but they don't want to obey Him. One of the greatest keys to your victory is obedience. The Bible says it's better than sacrifice. He'll forgive you and he'll forgive you and he'll forgive you and he'll keep forgiving you. But here's the key. If you want to walk on into the spirit realm, become more than a conqueror, you have to obey God. And it's just that simple. And the church has lost that message. And so I'm going to show you what the battle is today and I'm going to teach you how to win this battle. Some of you already know some of the principles. It's always good to have those things stirred up. My subject this morning, the unseen battle. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the precious word of God. Thank you that it is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Thank you that you watch over this word to perform it. You illuminate our hearts and our minds with the word of God. And you show us things to come. You teach us, you lead us, and you guide us through the precious Holy Ghost. So, Holy Ghost, let me preach your word this morning. Let my tongue be like that of the writer's pen. Let me preach it with the anointing that's sent down from above. Thank you for that anointing. It destroys the yoke. I praise you for a yoke-destroying anointing. I destroy yokes of darkness with my very words, and I speak the name of Jesus, and I command them to bow to the name of Jesus. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a look at our enemy this morning. If you're turning your Bibles, we have it on the screen to Luke chapter 11, where we find Jesus, he's casting out a demon out of a man who is unable to speak. And the Bible says that as soon as that demon had gone out, the dumb man, he began to speak, and the people marveled. But look at what they said. And some of them, they scoffed and said, he is casting out devils in the name of the ruler of the devil, Beelzebub. Don't think the world will like you when you start casting out devils, when you take authority in the spirit world. Don't think some church folk going to like you. But I'm sent to do what I do, hallelujah, and I know the devil must bow to the name of Jesus. Look at Luke eleven seventeen. 17. But he, Jesus, knowing the thoughts of these people that said he's casting out devils with the name of Beelzebub, <coughs> said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, to nothing. And a house divided against itself, that house will fall. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Now, look at verse 20. I love this. But if I, with the thing of God, he didn't say, with the hand of God, Jesus said, if I just took the finger of God, 
See, when the finger of God touches that world of darkness, boom, darkness is dispelled. There's power in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, but I, with the finger of God, cast out devils. No doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. Then Jesus goes on to give them an illustration of the unseen battle that we are fighting. Now, I want you to listen to what Jesus said. Luke eleven twenty one. When a strong man armed keepeth his bat his palace, his goods are in peace. But look at the next verse. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and shall overcome him, he taketh from him all the armor when he trusted and divided his goods. In other words, he just spoiled him. And Jesus spoiled principalities and powers and made to show them openly and gave us his name. So we can have that strong man's armor, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Jesus said that a strong man who is fully armed guards his goods, and his goods are safe. But when a stronger man comes, he can take from him all his armor, all his protection, and all his goods. And then Jesus begins to speak directly about the devil the power of demons, and I want you to listen to what he said, Luke eleven twenty four. But when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. He saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth the demon, the unclean spirit that was cast out. He finds this house, it is swept and garnished. It's been cleaned out. It looks real good. It's sitting in church. It looks real religious, but it has not gone on into the deeper things of God. It's not gone on into the Word. It's not been to church like it should have. He's not been to read his Bible like he should have. He's not prayed like he should have. And that demon, that demon that has gone out, he's returning. He finds it looking real pretty, real good. It's real religious, but it's not full of the Word. Got to be full of the word. Look at verse 26. Then this demon, he then goeth he and ta taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Now we're talking about the unseen spiritual battle this morning. And we're in the last days. And the devil knows that his time is short. And he has come down in great wrath. If you don't believe we're in the last days, just look at this nation. But it's okay that he's come down in great wrath because God is raising up an army. And God is raising up a ministry to train that army. And that's part of my assignment to train that army because most preachers are afraid of demons. They don't want to deal with demons. But from the time I got saved, I have dealt with them. I didn't go look in them. God just put me in situations where I had to deal with them. If you would, Sister Darnell, put up that slide, that uh, picture I gave you on the spiritual battle that's going on. Now, I'm not just talking something I read out of a book. I asked her to put a picture up, and this picture shows the three worlds and what's going on. If you're at the back, you may not be able to read this, but here's first heaven. That's the stars, and there's the moon over there. That's second heaven. There's the war zone, and we use the word of God in the war zone. There's the victory that comes by faith, and beware of doubt and unbelief. Now, the devil's not in hell like some people believe. It'd be nice if he was, but he rules his kingdom for in heavenly places. Between you and third heaven, we're in first heaven. There is a dimension called second heaven. And that it is right there in that black, the black representing the devil, the kingdom of darkness. And in the middle of it, you see the great victory. Faith is the victory. And when I was going through an operation and people thought it was all because I was under uh, sedation that they, they, they put me down for 12 hours and I fought my way through second heaven. I encounter demon after demon after demon. And guess what? I've encountered them ever since I got saved. That's all right. I like to fight. That's why I'm going to the United States Marine. I'm a fighter. I'm a warrior. 
When I got saved, God told me, he said, I want you to take what you learned in combat, and I want you to apply it in the spirit world, and I want you to teach my people how to fight. God told me, he said, champions produce champions, and I'm going to send you some people. I'm sending you some good ones that are rooted and granted in the word, but I'm going to send you some people in distress and debt and discontent with life. They got the DDDs just like I sent to David when he was at Adullam and the, the anointing that was on David out of Adullam, David transferred that anointing to the people that came there. They were in debt, in distress, and discontent with life. They came to Adullam. Adullam was a small cave where they hid. And it's called, I got a message somewhere, the place of the squeeze. And you had to turn sideways to get through and squeeze your way through the entrance there. And when you got in there, there was a great big opening where David hid his men. And he raised up 600 mighty men that no nation could stand against. And God told me, he said, I'm going to send you people like that. They're in debt and distress and discontent with life. And I want you to take the anointing that I put upon your life, and I want you to transfer that anointing into their life. If you're not here, I can't do a whole lot for you. But if you'll come back and get under the spirit and the spout where the spirit's poured out, I promise you one thing, you will get what God has purposed for your life. Okay, now Jesus begins to talk to us directly about the devil and the power of demons. And I want you to look at this again. Luke eleven twenty four. When that unclean spirit is gone out of the man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. He said, I will return to the house that I came out of. So just because you've been delivered, just because you got saved, it doesn't mean you're delivered. It doesn't mean you're saved because if you go back, that seven demons, that demon that you was cast out of you, that held you in darkness, plus seven more, they're going to come back, and the second state is going to be worse than your first state. So we're not talking about tiptoe through the tulips. We're not talking about some uh, Sunday morning picnic. We're talking about a warfare, a battle that's going on for your life, for your victories here, and for the world to come. Now, God is raising up an army, and it's going to be a mighty army of mighty warriors. And this army of Christians, they know that there are demons and devils that are roaming across the earth who are seeking to destroy the lives of men and women. This is an emerging army. This is an army who have listening ears. And they are listening to what the Holy Ghost is saying to the church. See, the real Christian warrior, he knows that he is in a battle. It's a spiritual battle. And they stay combat ready at all times. God said, suit up, put on the whole arm of God, for you're rational not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against rules of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So this battle that we're in, it's real. There are two dimensions that we see in this battle. We see the natural world. And once you get saved, God opens your eyes into the spirit world. And we need our eyes and our understanding, the eyes of our understanding enlightened by the Holy Ghost and the great teacher to show us the battle that we're in. So the real Christian warrior knows that there's a battle going on. He's combat ready. That's one thing about the United States Marines. Always ready. First to fight. They go into the battle because that's what they're trained to do first. They're warriors. They don't back down to anything. They don't leave anybody behind. They're taught how to use that rifle. They're taught about the weapons of our warfare. And they're mighty weapons, and they understand firepower. They understand the greater your firepower, the greater the, your survival is against the enemy. We had great firepower in Vietnam. The enemy had firepower. But I'll tell you one thing, when those jets come flying over with napalm and dropped it on them, you'd hear a hush. When Puff the Magic Dragon lit the sky up at night, and those 250 cal caliber machine guns, <laughs> sound like a dragon, look like a dragon, a stream of fire. Every fifth round was a trace around a 50 caliber round 
coming at you longer than my finger, the projectile in it. So you had to know how to fight, and you had to stay combat ready. So in this battle that we're in, our war's in the heavenlies. The devil is not in hell like religion teaches. Some people think he's in hell. Religion has taught that. He is the prince of darkness. He is the prince of the air. Jesus called him Satan. He used to be named Lucifer, but he lost his position in heaven. With the breath of God's nostrils, Jesus said, and he said, I saw him fall like lightning from heaven. There was no great battle. He said, I will rise above the throne of God. You can find all this in your Bible in Isaiah chapter 14. He said, I'll sit in the south of the north. I will ascend above the clouds. I will be like the most high God. And Jesus saw this created creature that he had created. He said, you think so? There was no cosmic battle. Jesus inhaled and he exhaled. He said, I saw him fall like light. And he pulled a third of the angels. He said, don't rejoice because the devil's a subject to you. He said, I want you to rejoice because your names are written in heaven. But there's a battle going on, and you better suit up and get battle ready. Now look at what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, for though we walk in the flesh, you got a fleshly body, go over and pinch yourself. You realize you're not a spirit floating around somewhere. You're not there yet. you got a flesh and blood and bone body. But though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after according to the flesh. See, there's a battle to be fought, but we don't fight it according to the flesh. Your grandmother's not the problem. That person at work is not the problem. That person that's trying to cheat you in a deal, they're not the problem. That person that did you wrong, you got a somebody wrong song, they're not the problem. We're not wrestling flesh and blood. There's a battle going on. And once you realize that, you will find out how to win the victories in life, in your life, in your family, for your children, and for your grandchildren. Because no matter what battle you win, there's going to be another battle that's going to be fought. And it's not going to be fought with natural weapons. You're going to have to learn the weapons of your warfare that are mighty through God. And most of the churches are asleep to this truth. And, and most preachers, they won't go cast out a devil. I've had them tell me, that's not my assignment. Well, my Bible tells me these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, Jesus said. They shall cast out devils. Most people don't like preaching like this. It doesn't bother me one bit whether they like it at headquarters, whether they like it up at the central headquarters or the main headquarters, the headquarters down for the North Carolina Conference. I know what I'm talking about. I've got Bible for everything I say. I fought this battle for 40 years now, and I'm still fighting it. And my mother, who, who died giving me childbirth, she went out into the spirit world. The devil came and said, I've come after your soul. And Jesus stepped between them and said, you can't have her. She belongs to me. Woo! I tell you, once you're bought by the blood, the devil can't have you. And you can get out of God's hands if you want to. That's up to you entirely. But if you want to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh, get in a good Pentecostal Holy Ghost filled church somewhere. Then have to have the name Pentecostal Holiness. Just get in a good charismatic Bible preaching, teaching, Holy Ghost church filled with the Spirit of God and you can come out of your situation. There are not enough devils in, in, in the kingdom of darkness to hold you. See, I almost said there are not enough devils in hell. The Bible, see, that's religion has taught me that. There are no de devils in hell yet. Man dies and goes to hell. And it's a holding tank until the, the devil is loosed for a season, he tries everybody, and then he is put in the lake of fire, which is the second death. And everybody that's been in hell, they're going to go to the lake of fire. That's the order. So the devil's not in hell. People that sin and reject Jesus Christ, they're in hell. And religion has taught it wrong. Read your Bible. You'll find out there's a lake of fire. We don't send them to prison here. And this nation is formed on biblical patterns. We don't send people to prison to start with. We send them to jail. And jail is like hell. And then we put them in prison. And that's what's going to happen to those that 
reject the gospel, they're going to be put in hell, and then they're going to be put in the lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death, which burneth forever and ever, from which there is no escape. So if you think that you come for a little Sunday school tiptoe through the tulips, the devil told me, he said, you're not going to preach that message anyway. I said, I don't know how it's going to preach, but I promise you one thing. If I have to crawl in that pulpit, I'll preach it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we're to cast down imaginations, high thoughts, and activities, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God that we have. And we're to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And then in Ephesians, the great apostle Paul calls it a wrestling match. He said, there's a struggle going on. And he says, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But then he puts it real plain. If you want to know where this is, you can go read it yourself. Ephesians chapter 6. Maybe you need to bring a pencil with you so you know where some of these are. I'll go back and watch the thing. Watch the sermon again. The army that God is raising up is beginning to understand that the war they're fighting is not a war of flesh and blood. It's a war against principalities and powers, a war against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know you can't really have an effective healing ministry if you don't know how to cast devils out. You wonder why the church is so powerless? Because they don't even understand the warfare that's going on. They're looking for more programs and things that will grow the church. Well, if the church grows, it'll grow because Jesus said, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But I can grow a business. I've already proven that. I can work in the business world, and you can grow an organization, whether it be a church, or whether it be McDonald's, or whether it be Best Buy, or whether it be anything you want to put your hands to. If you use the right techniques and business acumen, guess what? You can do it. And the same is true in a church. We got churches all over where souls are never saved. We got churches where they've not seen a healing in years. We've got churches where there's no miracle working power, no presence of God, and they come and go through the motions. I refuse to be a part of that. I'm going to be a part of the vibrant, dynamic, triumphant, victorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ where signs and wonders follow the preaching of the word of God. Now I've been called into a lot of situations by people who wanted me to come and cast out devils. Like I told you, I didn't go look in the devil. I've had people who wanted to be saved that thought they had blasphemed the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm talking about. Demon spirits that bring condemnation. Many times I've just asked the person, may I pray for you the way I feel? in my spirit to pray for you. You see, you got to deal with a person's spirit after you deal with their willpower. You have to deal with a person's willpower first. Now, if you're going to cast out devils, the person must want to be free. As long as a person wants to be in bondage to sickness, disease, alcohol, drugs, nicotine, sexual addiction, pornography. You can go right on down the list. As long as they want to be bound by that, they will be bound. But when your willpower says, hey, devil, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm not living like this anymore. I'm going to church. I'm going to somewhere where the power of God is. I am going to submit myself totally to God and God is going to deliver me. So you got to deal with willpower. Somewhere in that struggle, the person will have to make a decision to be free. And many times I've laid my hands on people that said, I can't get saved, I can't get saved. I said, can I pray for you the way I want to pray for you? And I simply say these words, come out, you lying devil, in Jesus' name. Say these words. And I've led them in a sinner's prayer. And I say, thank you, Lord, I'm saved. And, and I've done it countless times. I said, Thank you, Lord. I'm born again. And their face lights up and you see the glory of God. You've got to deal with what God puts before you. I, I remember on one occasion we, we went and this mother had a brand new little baby. And she said, there's a force in the nursery. 
and, and, and it's trying to kill my little baby. And they called me over there, and Teresa went with me and some other people in the church, and she said, I want you to come back, Pastor, and I want you to sense. Let, tell me what you sense. And I went back, and the house stood up on my arm, and I knew it was a demon spirit. And I cast the devil out of that little child. A little child, the devil will move in on anything he can. Have you ever wondered why people have the problems they have? It could happen when they're a little child. When a strong man enters in and takes a hold of something, he's got it. Until a stronger man comes and takes charge. So this world that we're in, the devil is called the God of this world. Now the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, but the devil is the God of this world. And he has demon spirits. He has demons over cities. He has demons over regions. He has demons that the church has to rise up and deal with. I've been fighting them ever since I got saved. But I, I remember I went back and I prayed for that little child and cast the devil out of it. That little boy's in church now. <laughs> that little boy's in his 20s, got a family of his own. Had I not gone back there, had I not dealt with that spirit, only God knows what would have happened to that little boy. And after I cast the devil out of him, I saw the Holy Ghost come on his mother, and I reached out and touched her, and the power of God hit her. She was instantly filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives her. They're in church. Her husband's in church. They're in church because somebody carried the power of God to them. Somebody dealt with spirits. And when you deal with spirits, praise God, get ready. Be suited up. Stay suited up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. Just know, praise God, don't let a quitting spirit come upon you. I rebuke any quitting spirit that's in, under the sound of my voice and command it to go in Jesus' name. I command the spirit of faith to rise in the hearts of people. I told the devil when I went through the operation, I said, you have made one colossal mistake when you come after me. And he doesn't stop. My mother died. Give me childbirth. I was born into the atmosphere with a devil trying to take my mother out. And I'd just been born. Jesus said, you can't have her. She said, son, I saw my body and I came back in it. Well, when I was 62 years of age, she was 89. And she went home to be with Jesus. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a clap off and a praise. <laughs> he brought her back and he kept her. That was 62 years later. How would you like to have God add 62 years to your life? I remember I was preaching in a revival and this lesbian was there. Let me get down to where we live, this crazy woke community that we live in. Joe Biden and that bunch of nitwits up there. If you don't like that, I'm sorry. Look at what they've done to our country. Demons, devils, demon powers of lesbianism, homosexuality, and, and telling a little child that, that you can be a boy one day and a girl one day. No, if God made you a man, you're a man. If God made you a woman, you're a woman. God, don't be confused about it. If you've got the plumbing of a man, you're a man. If you've got a womb, you are a woman. Praise God. And God wasn't confused when God made you. That group up in Washington, D.C., they are confused. And guess what? They're going to try to shut the preaching like this down. They're going to try to shut churches down. They're going to try to silence the voice of the church. They don't want the name of Jesus Christ mentioned because the name of Jesus carries power in three worlds. Every knee in heaven, every knee in earth, and every knee under the earth must bow to the name of Jesus and confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I didn't just start this stuff, praise God. I didn't just start this when I got up this morning. I've been engaged in this battle for years. And guess what? The church year, world, I can talk to them about it. I can talk to the dignitaries, and they look at me like I'm some person from outer space. That's what's going on. 
And I don't know how to raise people up when they don't have a voice to listen. Until they have to fight through something. And they survive it. Some people never survive it. They die at an early age. They go back. When a stronger man comes and takes from a man that's guarding his goods, those, he has to give them up. See, Jesus said the strong man who is fully armed guards his palace and his goods are safe. But when a stronger man comes, he can take from him all his armor, all his protection, and then spoil his goods. Greater is he that is in you, Jesus and the Holy Ghost, than he that is in the world, the devil and his demons that rules his kingdom from the heavenless. You have greater firepower. Have you ever wondered why some people get delivered? They serve God for a season, and then they go back. Well, here's your answer. Those spirits, they leave. I read it to you earlier. They go and they walk through dry places. They seek rest. They find none. And then they seek seven demons that are more powerful than themselves. And they decide to go back to that person that they were cast out of. They have no home. Have you ever seen a wild dog, demon-possessed, a wild horse that no one could tame? A spirit got in them. I used to see that as a little boy. I saw in a church a young 16-year-old girl that no one could hold, strong men. She just snapped out of their arms, full of the devil. I saw that same girl after she had gone out into the world of sin, hoochie-coochie, drugging, dancing, prostituting, and everything. I saw her delivered years later and filled with the Holy Ghost, and she became a model saint in the church. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Just because you've been in prostitution, just because you've been a drug addict, just because you've been an alcoholic, just because you've, you, you've had lustful things that have carried you down the wrong road, it does not mean you have to stay there. There's power in the blood. And I come to announce freedom in Jesus' name. There's an unseen spiritual battle that is going on. And you need to suit up. Get the word of God in you. Now, when that devil comes back, he finds that house clean and garnished. They have no word. They have no prayer life. They have no sanctification. They have no Holy Ghost power. They've been cleaned out. But they haven't been under anointed preaching that preaches the word of God with power and anointing. Sister Darnell, if you would put up 2 Peter 2 and 20. It's not in my outline. Jesus talks about the unclean spirit getting seven more spirits. But the apostle Peter that sat under his ministry for three years, look what he said about it. He said, for after... They have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and Savior Jesus Christ. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than that at the end. I wonder where he got that from. Look at the next verse. For it had been better for them that they had never known the way of righteousness. And after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto him. Now look at the next verse, because Peter, he's getting right on down to where we all live. He said, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog has returned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to wallowing in the mire. I've seen people in the church get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and go back. I've seen people in the church, and they don't believe they're filled with the Holy Ghost, and I've heard them speak in tongues, and they live good model lives. I've seen people that were raised in the church to get their children through uh, church, and off and married, grown and grown, and I've seen these same people as a past. I've seen them go back into the world of sin. Some of them never been in the sin. They never tried it. They really didn't know what 
the, the blood of the cross meant they had never really been born again of the spirit. All they had was religion. Daddy was saved. He might have even been a preacher. Mama was saved. She was a saint. Others were saved all around them. But they sat in church. Swept and garnished. Real religious. Never done anything really wrong. And when their children are grown and gone, I've seen those people get divorces, go out and do things that I would never have done in my worst sin. What caused that? Demon powers. Now, people that are empty, I want to show you what Jesus said one more time. Jesus said that that demon goes out, Luke eleven twenty six. 26, then he goeth and take it to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state is worse than the first. I'll tell you something. We live in a world that does not want to commit itself to anything. People today, they want to do things their own way. It's more so today than it's ever been. But it's always been like that because the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is the way of destruction. Most people don't want to commit to anything. And even though some people get saved, they can't make it. And they fail because they, to they fail to totally submit themselves to the word of God. I don't want you to submit yourself to me. I'm just a messenger with a message. I am the pastor, and I have a responsibility, and I have to keep things in order. But you and I are to submit ourselves to the Word of God. Pastor Nelson will be gone on to heaven someday, unless the Lord, if the Lord tarries. If he comes into rapture, I'm going on the first wave. Hallelujah. I plan to live my life just like that, by the help and grace of God. But base your faith on the Word of God. Not some man in the pulpit. I heard somebody say about a church that near my hometown that I grew up in that area, and they say that's Pastor So and So's church. No, it's not. I don't care how many years he was there. That church belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you think a man can do something, he can only do what he can do through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And the same with a woman or, or anybody called by God to preach the gospel or teach people. Even though people get saved, they can't make it because they fail to submit totally to the word of God. And in the time of temptation, they fall away because they have no roots. Let me fast forward this thing here. Jesus cast out devils. He said, the works that I do, I want you to do them also. And I want you to do greater works. See, some of you, you're being attacked in your body. I've, I've gone through that recently. But here I stand. Hallelujah. Others are being attacked in your finances. Some of you are being attacked in your marriage and in your home with your children. There is an enemy called the devil. There is an unseen spiritual battle. And I love church, and I love to come and worship and praise God and fellowship with people of like precious faith. But I cannot leave this subject matter alone because if I leave this type of subject matter alone, I will leave many of you in bondage to the devil and his kingdom of darkness. And we need Holy Ghost preachers with spine. We need somebody that's been alone and prayed. We need somebody that reads their Bible, that talks to God, that prays, and they sing unto the Lord in their prayer closet, and they worship God all the time. If you get a preacher like that, praise God, you've got one sent from heaven. If you just get a spokesman, all you've got is another orator. Paul said, I didn't come with enticing words of man's wisdom. I came in power and demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. Ghost. And this place is filled with demonstrations. Go on, praise God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. 
Let me give you three things real quick that'll help you stand your ground and win the victory. Number one, name the thing that is lording itself over you and declare that Jesus Christ will be Lord in its place. Name the thing that you're facing, trying to lord itself over you, and declare to that demon spirit, Jesus Christ is Lord. You are not Lord, devil. I changed lords a long time ago. Jesus Christ is my Lord. He's my Savior. I'm born again, washed in the blood. But let me tell you something. He is my Lord and my Master. My heart does not condemn me. I have confidence toward God. And whatever I ask of him, I receive it because I keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And when I stumble and when I fall, I just get up and brush the dust off myself and repent and say, Lord, it's me again. I'm always needing you. No matter where I am or what I'm going through, you saved my soul. You made me whole. There's nothing you can't do. Lord, it's me again. I'm always needing you so number one name that thing that's lording itself over you number two you must bind a strong man in the name of Jesus I got two minutes look at Luke 10 19 I love this scripture if you don't if you haven't memorized it you should have I've preached it enough if you've come to this church Luke 10 19 behold I give unto you power that first word power is exosia it means authority it's a bad translation in King James, New King James, he says, Behold, I give unto you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions over all the power. That word is dunamis, over all the power of them. And the devil has power. He doesn't have any authority over you. He has power to inflict you. He has power to come against your family. He has power to, to do the works of darkness. He is the king of, of the dark underworld, the god of this world. He's real. He's an entity. And he hates you, and he hates God, and he can't hurt God, so he tries to hurt God's people because God is touched with the feeling of high infirmities, and there's healing in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood. The word of God, man, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So bind that devil and tell it. Say, Jesus gave me power over you, and you got to go. In Jesus' name. Take your position in Christ and cast the devil down. So not only must you speak to the strong man that's trying to lord itself over you, not only do you need to bind a strong man in the name of Jesus. Number three, this is my favorite one. Punish the devil with your praise. Come on, Pastor Ricky. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said I want to sing some of that praise. Glory to God. Every praise is to our God. Get up and shout and don't hurt anybody's eardrums by shouting too loud. Praise God. Keep your shout to, to where you can hear it and you don't burst everybody's eardrums. Hallelujah. And let's worship God in this place. Come on. Every praise is to our God. Punish the devil with your praise. Hallelujah. I love to praise the Lord. Every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Hey, Every devil, I'm coming out of this. One I'm in an unseen Every spiritual battle. Every but I see it clearly today. To our God. Woo! Woo! Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Every pray. Every pray. Let's come on down and praise God, God around the altar. There is fire on this altar. Every God said the fire to our God. never be burning upon my altar. It shall never go out. As you come, I want you to step right into the fire, the cleansing power of God. Hallelujah. Everybody come to the altar. Let's get together around Hallelujah. God's altar. Woo! Glory. God. Hallelujah. Get together. Tell the devil you're not lording yourself over me. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Every praise, glory. Every praise Hallelujah. is to our God. Come on, Every praise God around these altars. Get that corporate anointing together. Every praise. Glory together. Every Woo! praise is to our glory. God. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah to our God. Get it. Every prayer, every prayer, hallelujah, pass that coat around, that mantle is 
anointed this morning, passing around us us glory. We're going to break some strongholds. We're going to break every chain. The devil's not holding people in chains. Glory. Jesus, the chain breaker. Break every chain. Woo! Sing glory. hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah to our God. Glory. Every praise. Hallelujah. Every praise. Praise is the weapon. God. Praise is the battle cry. Praises to our God, every word of worship, one of Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I release your deliverance power. Father, in the name of Jesus, your only begotten Son, I release your miracle working power. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus, I release healings. Lord, I release financial blessings. In the name of Jesus, I release families coming together in love. Children being submissive to their parents and parents loving their children and bringing them up in the nurture, the fear, and the admonition of the Lord. I release the word. Hallelujah. Glory. And the word is spirit. And the word is life. And the word is health. To all our flesh. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. You're my Savior. God, my healer. You're my healer, Master. You're my deliverer, Lord. I'm free. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. One of them. Say do hallelujah like this. to our God. Oh, glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. I said be loosed in Jesus' name. No bondage. Say hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah to our God. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, do what only you can do now. Word has been preached, Holy Ghost. Now do your work. God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Holy Ghost. Take it. Be healed. I break every chain. Every devil that's ever lied to you. I command those imaginations and high thoughts to go in Jesus' name. My Savior, God, my deliverer. Yes, is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. By the power of the great commission, by the power of the blood, be free. Woo! 